Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Tiffany and I'm a homeschooling mama of three boys and this is 5 Peas in the Broad Pod where I talk about motherhood and homeschooling every single week. In this video, I'm going to be doing a Q&A with questions that I received from you guys on Instagram. So let's get started. So I will actually not be mentioning names in this Q&A just because I want to respect the people who actually DM'd me uh, privately to ask me personal questions. I just wanna be able to respect their privacy. I don't know if they want me to share these questions. So I'm not gonna do that. So yeah, I'm just gonna jump into the questions in no random order and not name any names. So the first question is about homeschooling. It says, do you incorporate any technology or use any technology based programs in your homeschool? So yes, we do. I actually have a video about my favorite homeschooling apps on my channel. I will go ahead and link it in the description box below so you can watch it after this one. I like to break up our learning so that our boys are not working in workbooks all day. Uh, we do a lot of multi-sensory things. So a lot of times we'll practice in a workbook and then we'll use a whiteboard or we'll practice in a workbook and then we'll apply that skill on an app so like for instance my kindergartner he needs to be practicing his quick addition and subtraction facts so something that helps him is using uh, math mammoth on the ipad or we do prodigy math there are a lot of different things that we use to supplement we also do completely online piano lessons with hoffman academy we tend to look up a lot of YouTube videos. We watch a lot of documentaries on like Disney Plus and Amazon and stuff like that. So we do use technology. I am not anti-screen time. I do like to limit it though. Okay, so the next question can actually piggyback off of the previous one. It says, how much book work do you use versus online resources? So since technology is used um, more as a supplementary thing in our homeschool, it is definitely a small portion of our day that we spend on iPads or laptops. Like right now, our children are having their media time. Uh, they're allowed to choose a learning app and go with that while I film this video. So um, it is not a huge chunk of our day. We don't do online school or anything like that. So the next question is, was homeschooling easy when you first started? So homeschooling has never been easy for me right off the bat. Um, it was never the situation where my kids just woke up ready to learn and we had a beautiful breakfast and then we learned beautiful things and then we did nature studies. It was never ever like that. It's never been like that. I have always had to really work hard at discipline. I have always had to seek the Lord um, and his guidance in all of this. It actually reminded me of how obedient I had to be at the beginning and still need to be continually because I feel like homeschooling wasn't this idea that I wanted to pursue. This was definitely something that the Lord placed on my heart. I couldn't ignore the feeling. I couldn't ignore this calling on my life. And I fully asked him to equip me in every single aspect because I completely felt inadequate and incapable of teaching my children. And I do recognize that any of those feelings I went through were direct attacks from the enemy trying to make me feel inadequate and unable to uh, pursue this calling that God had placed on my life and trying to be obedient to um, his will. And so I definitely had to pray that out. I continually have to pray that out every single day. And I am a work in progress. Homeschooling is not easy. It's not for the faint at heart. But if you are obedient to his calling on your life, I know that God will equip you in any way that he sees fit wherever you need it. He will make you confident and strong in all of those areas or he'll help you outsource and resource where you need to. The next question is, what do you use for science? So we normally use Apologia's Exploring Creation with Chemistry and Physics. I think that's what it's called, or Physics and Chemistry. Can't remember right now. Uh, we're using that book of the Young Explorers edition of Apologia's Science uh, curriculum along with our co-op, but our co-op actually goes through certain breaks throughout the year. Obviously, we're on a break right now with the coronavirus stuff going on and the quarantines and all that, so we are not able to meet. So we are on break from co-op. In the meantime, we are using Indescribable to sort of give us ideas and then we branch off from there and we read books and we look at YouTube videos and stuff like that. But we will be continuing to use Apologia when we resume with our virtual meetings with our group. And we sort of use Apologia every year we have for the past two years that we've been with the co-op just because it's easier to uh, be doing it along with a group. It has accountability. You have to do the readings in order to do the hands-on experiments at the co-op days. So it helps me to be motivated enough to tackle science because it's not my favorite subject. 
The next question is, how have you approached multiplication? And I did answer this on Instagram. We use Math Mammoth as our spine. So that is our main form of instruction for the math subject. That's what both of our boys use in different grade levels. Uh, so for multiplication, that is um, introduced in the textbook. It's actually called a work text because it's all in one book. I have a video about Math Mammoth. If you want to see it, I'll link it above and you can watch it after this. And so we use that as a spine and then we supplement with different tools and fun stuff to do. So uh, we are actually using the learning wrap ups. I have showed those in a haul video. We've had those for a while now. And then we also are just starting to use the Times Tales DVDs and worksheets. And I will give you a review about them and an update on how they're working for us very soon. The next question says, how do you like Brave Writer so far? I love it. That's it. I just love it. It is meeting all of our needs. It is meeting every expectation that I have and I cannot be a happier camper with that program. The next question is one that will require a long answer. It's how can I get started? Um, if you are looking for the technical ways to get started uh, homeschooling, you can look at my how to homeschool in California video. I will link that in the description box below if I've run out of cards. And that video actually uh, will tell you the differences between like public education, private education, um, homeschooling on your own as a private homeschool, homeschooling with a charter and all of that. That will give you the technical aspect of that. Um, how to homeschool is going to look different for every family. Start looking up different approaches to homeschool. And when I say approaches, I mean Charlotte Mason, classical education, Montessori, Waldorf, eclectic homeschooling, all of those different terms are different ways to homeschool. So start getting familiar with all those different types. Um, there are also a lot of books that you can read. I'm gonna be doing a video about my favorite homeschooling books and just sort of look up to anybody that you know is homeschooling in your real life or online and start to get ideas from their wisdom. You will find that you will be highly influenced by what works for people that you personally know and trust. I hope that I'm one of those people. The next question says, no question here. I'm just too impatient to homeschool. IDK, how you do it? Um, first of all, I think that that is an incredible misconception and I'm glad that you think that I'm patient and have it all together, uh, but I truly, truly don't. In anything that you think is a strength of mine, it's because the Lord has equipped me in that area and because I have probably specifically prayed for that. So yeah, I think that if you feel inadequate, if you feel like you are not patient enough, that will be something that you will be tested on, but the Lord will provide for that specific need. The next question is, how do you know whether it's a curriculum that needs to be changed in your homeschool or if the problem is you? I'm struggling. Oh man, I have been there many times and I have said it time and time again. I am a total rookie homeschooler. I've only been doing this for two years, so I may not be the best expert at this, but just in my personal walk um, and in my experience homeschooling, um, I often think that it is a touch of the curriculum that has been wrong. Like we uh, had a really bad experience using Beast Academy and I thought it was me, um, but it wasn't a fit for my child, that specific boy. So that curriculum didn't work and we completely set it aside for a while to be able to figure out whether it was me, him, the way that he learned or the curriculum was just all wrong for us. So I think that you have to first off step away from the curriculum and just take a break and learn to like love on your child and just discover something that you guys both love together and then come back to it. And if, if it's still a problem when you come back to the curriculum, it might very well be that. And you just need to let that go. I know it feels like an incredible waste. It's a waste of money, but your sanity is worth so much more than whatever you paid for that curriculum. And you can always resell it. The next question says, do you do standardized testing? Yes, our family is personally required to do standardized testing because we are enrolled with a public charter school. However, President Trump actually um, made an announcement yesterday that all public schools, all schools were not going to be required to do state testing or standardized testing, whatever you want to call it, this year. So we don't have to do it this year. And I'm very glad because my kids do not like taking tests. At least one of them really, really despises it. Um, the next question is, what are your Bible study recommendations um, for family and for yourself? And I answered this privately, but I just want to share it on here too. Um, so Bible study is something that I really try to put in the forefront of my life. I have to have to connect with the Lord 
every single day. I want to dive deeper into his word. I want to understand him better so that I can be a better child of God. So right now I am currently doing Rebecca Spooner's uh, Read Through the Bible in a Year Challenge. I have several videos all about my walk uh, in reading through the Bible for the very first time cover to cover. If you want to follow that, you can look at my mom chats here on my channel. I'll have a playlist down below for those. Um, so I really recommend that. Just diving straight into the word is great. And I love the like actionable steps that she has that you can take in her little uh, planner when it comes to the study. I also really like the Joy of Living studies. I think those are great. I have done Priscilla Schreier's uh, studies before. What else have I done? I love Heidi St. John's Mom Strong. I think that is an amazing book, an amazing study. I love her. She is just like somebody that mentors me without even knowing it. And there are a lot of good choices online. If I can think of any other recommendations, I will put them in the description box below. So the next question is from Facebook. Um, somebody asked me on there, how long do you spend homeschooling each day typically? Um, and this is going to vary every single day. It just depends on what we have going on. If we're leaving the house or if we're staying home, I plan uh, differently for you know half days if we have a lot of errands to run or if we have a field trip, maybe we're not even doing any book work at all that day. So uh, it varies. I would say typically if we're at home and we're on a good roll, we can maybe do about four to five hours of homeschooling at home. And that's a lot for many homeschoolers, but I do have three boys, so we take a lot of breaks. On some days, it seems like we're doing school all day, but it's because we've taken so many brain breaks and we've gone outside and we've come back in. So um, it varies every single day. And if you are thinking of homeschooling, I'm sure that you will find a rhythm that makes sense for your family. The next question says, do you still spend time on each class subject? Example, science and math. So like, do I still spend time in each day uh, working on each subject? So uh, no, <laughs> we don't typically hit what you would normally hit in a typical traditional public or private school day. So I actually do looping subjects. We have something called a family basket. I have a video about that. I will link it down below. There are going to be a lot of references down below in the description box. So make sure you go there. Um, but our morning basket contains uh, subjects that we tackle as a family. So history, science, Bible, our journals, uh, art, and what is the last one? Brave writer. So uh, and Grammar Galaxy. So those are the things that we all do together. And we kind of rotate those with the exception of Brave Writer. Brave Writer is something that you have to do every day and then Bible we do every day, but the other subjects like history and science, we don't hit those every single day because I don't feel like it is necessary. We can uh, become proficient enough without having to spend an hour out of, out of each day talking about history. We can be more hands-on and things like that with the schedule that we follow. So the subjects that we do hit every single day are math, language arts, reading aloud, doing the Bible, and reading our journal. Those are our non-negotiables every single day. We have to hit those or I just feel like we haven't done our full school day. Um, anything else is extra and I hope that we can hit it, um, but we usually spend no more than an hour to an hour and a half um, squeezing in those additional subjects. Wrong. So the next question is, how do you source uh, the correct information in your homeschool. I think that's what she's saying. Um, how do you, how do I source my information? I think she's asking like, how do I know that I'm uh, getting information that is truthful and real so that I am teaching my children something that is authentic and not string them and not um, teaching them something that, you know, just comes out of the blue. So I think that's what she means. And I had trouble at the beginning of our homeschooling journey and I really, really relied on the wisdom and the guidance from women who I knew in my actual life who were homeschooling and also women who were sharing their journey on YouTube. So I looked to a lot of the like bigger homeschooling mama channels. I looked to Grace and Grit. I looked to um, Becky at A Place to Nest. I looked to Rebecca at Homeschool On. I looked to a lot of those like OG homeschooling uh, mamas here on YouTube and the ones that I knew in real life to get their trusted and valued opinions. I read a lot of books and I used trusted sources. I also have a really important book recommendation for you guys. It's a book called uh, Home Learning Year by Year. I will post a picture of it because I don't have it in my hands right now, but that is a really, really great guidebook. It tells you what children should be learning every single year so that you don't feel like you're second guessing yourself. It's a really good read. It offers a lot of resources, a lot of links and a lot of book recommendations and stuff like that. I highly, highly, highly recommend that book. Okay, so the next question says, do you think that your children are better than those in mainstream school? 
I think that there is this misconception that a lot of homeschooling moms feel like their children are better and they're receiving this better education than those in regular school and stuff like that because we advocate so much for homeschooling that it's like all or nothing, right? Um, I don't think that. I think that homeschooling is perfect for our specific children. I think that homeschooling is this path that the Lord specifically uh, pushed us towards um, walking through. I don't think that it's for everybody and I don't think that my children are better. However, I do think that my specific children are receiving a better education through homeschooling than they were in the public school system. They had amazing teachers. Don't get me wrong. I'm still in contact with them. I love them. I think they're amazing, sweet ladies. Um, but I do absolutely feel like they're receiving a better education because it is tailor-made to their specific needs. And that absolutely shows in the progress that we've made. The next question says, how do you know if it is working? And this mama just kind of shared that she feels completely inadequate. She feels that she is just not smart enough to homeschool. And I just want to reassure you, the mama who asked that question, that you are more than enough. If you feel you are lacking in any specific way or you feel inadequate to teach math or whatever it may be because you're not good at it, God will equip you. God will either place people in your life who are stronger than you in that specific skill set, or he will give you classes. He will give you the money to pay for those classes. He will take care of your every single need. And I just want to urge you to pray that out, Mama, because it is something that I have so, so wrestled with many, many times on my short walk homeschooling. I've only been doing this for two years, but I have seriously um, had those thoughts as well. And I just want to reassure you that if you feel inadequate, if you don't feel smart enough, if you get tongue tied like me and you can't talk sometimes, you feel like you are completely uh, unprepared to homeschool your kids. If God has put it on your heart so heavily that you cannot ignore the fact that you feel called to do it, do it because he will uh, give you the tools that you need. He will equip you and make you so strong, stronger than you ever thought that you could be. And then eventually maybe you'll even make YouTube videos like me sharing your journey about it. <laughs> And that is it, my friends. Those are all the questions that I received from moms just like you uh, who wanted to know about homeschooling and life in general. I hope that these uh, answers might have helped you. I hope that you might have found something encouraging to you on your walk as a mother or as a homeschooler or potential homeschooler. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do that. Please make sure you click the notification bell so you don't miss another video. And I will see you in the next video. I am praying for you. I am praying for safety and health for your family this week. I know a lot of stuff is going on in the world. I hope that you stay safe and I hope that you stay rooted in the word above all things. I will see you guys next time. Bye.